Hello, I'm Brad Culberson. Today, I'm doing a session talking about two amazing new features from Snowflake that we announced at Summit, but we're going to revisit for those that may have missed out and go a little bit deeper. The two new features that I'm going to talk about is Unistore and native applications. Let's get started. First, a bit about me. I came to Snowflake in hopes of solving these very challenging problems in different database engines that have existed in the industry for years and decades that I've worked on. Today, I hope to show you the two new features that I'm super excited about that makes developing on Snowflake easy. Today's agenda, we're going to talk about two features that I mentioned earlier. The first is Unistore. The second is native applications. And I'll also show you a demo exercising both of these capabilities. First, we're going to dig directly into Unistore. Why did we build Unistore? What we heard from our customers and developers like you was that it was too complicated to solve these challenges inside of the data ecosystem. There were too many different database engines being used. It was very challenging to move data between these separate systems. And it caused a lot of bugs and issues when customers tried to use systems that had delayed access to data. They weren't real time and they weren't consistent across queries that were running on different database engines. So what are we building to meet these developer needs? We're calling this new workload Unistore. This is a completely new approach to working with applications that have both transactional and analytical needs in one consistent platform. The transaction workload is something completely new to Snowflake. And this is one in which we can now allow for fast single row operations that are much needed inside of transactional applications and always needed a separate database before. The Unistore data is consolidated into a single data set. So you're not working with a new technology. You're working with the same Snowflake you're used to using. And you can use that same data set for not just the transactional needs, but also any app analytical needs your application needs. All of these capabilities are inside of Snowflake, simplifying your deployment, your development, and having a unified front to all of your governance needs inside your organization. The feature I'm going to talk about today that's part of Unistore workload is hybrid tables. Currently, this is in private preview. The hybrid tables functionality allows you to get this excellent performance for both query types. So you can issue things like single row record retrievals and single row level updates, as well as large aggregations for your analytical needs. It supports all of the OLTP features you're used to using in other engines that exist in the industry, like unique keys indexes, and it enforces referential integrity on all of the constraints that you define. These all integrate seamlessly with existing Snowflake tables and interop well with the existing analytical tables that we've released and created before. All of this just works together in one seamless system. You can see on the right, very little's changed with the SQL syntax to create tables in Snowflake. There's just one new keyword, create hybrid table instead of create table. And now we're treating the storage and querying of that table completely different than what we've done historically with our analytical tables. How did that change? This is what you expect from Snowflake today. We have a cloud services layer that you send your queries to. Those queries are then routed into the warehouses that you have defined for processing. And those warehouses are the compute that talks to the columnar storage. The columnar storage has provided amazing capabilities on Snowflake to allow us to do all of the things applications need to do for analysis and analytics workloads. But it no longer meets the needs of some applications that have more transactional needs. This is a diagram of how this changes with Unistore architecture. We were able to reuse the cloud services layer. We're reusing the same virtual warehouses you were using before. But how we're persisting and in indexing data has changed. We now have a row store, which is very low latency, that allows us to do quick retrievals of single records. We have row level locking, so we can update single records very efficiently, which is that transactional need that a lot of customers were saying they needed as part of their application. In the background, seamlessly, we then synchronize that data to a columnar data set that looks much like our historical tables, where we can now route queries that come in that are analytical over to the more efficient OLAP engine. To you, the developer, you just issue queries to Snowflake. We handle all the complexity of whether this is something that the row store would be better at or the columnar store would be better at. And we automatically execute and return the results to you quickly. What I love about this feature is how easy it is. 
all the complexity of managing the row store and the columnar store is completely hidden from you. And we manage all of the complexity of this. You talk to Snowflake exactly the way you do today. The difference is now operationally, it can handle queries that Snowflake was never able to do with extremely low latencies. In this demo, I'm gonna show you how to use a hybrid table in Snowflake. What's amazing with Snowflake's capabilities around the hybrid tables is we've incorporated all of our existing functionality and you can use all the features that you are used to using inside of your traditional analytical tables on the hybrid table. I'm gonna show how you can use row-based access policies to filter out data that's inside of your hybrid tables. First, I'm gonna insert some data into the tenant table. In this example, I'm inserting 25 tenants. I'm gonna insert some random data for these tenants. You can imagine this would be a multi-tenant table. Each of those 25 tenants has some number of rows in here. In this case, I'm just inserting a fairly small data set for the example. And I'll show you what that looks like currently. So in the tenant table, we'll have 25 tenants. There they are. We have data for each of the tenants. You can see here the tenant identifiers. But right now I can see all the tenants. So in a multi-tenant table, wouldn't it be nice if actually we were able to leverage some of the other Snowflake functionality, like our row access policies, to protect this data, to make sure tenants can only query data that's theirs. I'm gonna create an entitlements table, which was a common pattern of using row-based access policies inside of our traditional tables. I'm gonna grant my user direct access to tenant identifier 24 in this example. In this row access policy, this is querying the entitlements table to make sure it only shows the data that is available to me. In this case, it's joining my username into the entitlements table to grant me access to tenant identifier 24. I'm now gonna add the row-based access policy to the table. And this is a hybrid table, remember. Traditionally, this was always available to Snowflake customers on analytical tables. But with these being so seamless and well integrated inside of Snowflake, these features all just work out of the box. I'm now gonna query that table. Remember, this had a lot of data that I was able to see a minute ago um, for tenant identifiers that were not 24. What's amazing here, you see that the data was filtered. Now I can only see tenant identifier 24. If I do a count, you'll see I have much less than the total data set. So I can only see five records. And before this row access policy was applied, I had access to the 100 records that was generated in the query above. So seamless access to all existing Snowflake functionality, all wrapped up in our new table type called hybrid inside the Unistore workload. I hope you're excited to see how easily and seamless these functionality works across the analytical tables that we've had historically, but now are available to hybrid tables and how the exact same capabilities that you were used to using still just work on these new table types. The next feature I'm gonna go into is native applications. So why are we building native applications? We heard from you, the developers, that there were three main pain points while building applications in traditional formats. The first was data sensitivity. It's been difficult to launch software as a service and have customers send data to third parties. A lot of the data that's being created is sensitive and this has to go through all kinds of levels of approval to be able to sell a product and an application to customers. There's been a misalignment of costs. Oftentimes these are sold in ways that are not aligned to actual consumption. What happens in these situations is often you've built an amazing product. Customers love it and they use it so much that the operational cost goes past your revenue and it's no longer profitable. The third that's been a pain point is just new applications coming into the marketplace. How can new customers be found? How can they find new applications and easily install them? Native applications, we think, solves all three of these pain points for application builders. The native application framework we're developing is currently in private preview and it consists of three large building blocks. The first is how you're building it. Currently, you're a developer of Snowflake. You're already building things inside of Snowflake based on Snowflake objects and Snowflake primitives. You will be able to reuse these same primitives for everything you build on top of native applications. 
The second building block that we've added for native applications is a completely new way to deploy applications. So you can now deploy applications and publish them inside the marketplace so that customers can automatically install them directly into their accounts. As being part of the marketplace, you now have a place to advertise your application, which allows for easy distribution of your application and allows you to monetize these applications for all of the people looking for the applications that you want to build. This digs in quite a bit deeper of exactly what a native application is. On the left, you're the builder. You have a set of source data in many cases. You have a lot of objects you've created in traditional Snowflake technologies that you're used to using. All of that you build inside your account. That application can then be shared to customers through the marketplace. The customer on the right side of the application would go to the marketplace, install your application, and the objects that you have inside your installation would automatically be installed into the customer account. Data that you've shared to the customer also can be available to your application that you've installed in the account. Another customer, like in the bottom here, comes in, they also can install your same application and also have access to your data, but also have local data that your application is, is curating and is storing on behalf of them to be able to power your application. What's amazing here is it's using the same primitives you're used to using. This is not a new development technology you need to learn. You can manage who has access to what data and the customer can manage what data they grant to you. So both sides have security around what data is being shared and how it's shared. You can process data directly in the customer account, leveraging their compute. The data never leaves the customer's walls. So you no longer have a lot of the pains that we've seen in the industry around data sovereignty and whether a third party can be trusted. And all the compute for all these pieces that you've deployed into the customer account is now billed directly to the customer. The customer interacts with this inside their account. They can interact to all the data that you've shared to them, as well as the data that you've created for them and the, the objects that you've created and the logic you've created can be exposed and allow them to execute that and see the results. What's amazing with this, I think one of the early use cases that we've built this for and we see customers using it for is the clean room. Clean rooms have been very challenging historically, and they have this situation where both sides need to share parts of the data, but they can't share all of the data with each other. Often these were solved with bringing in a third party and both parties trusting the third party with this. But as you can see in this diagram, it's very easy for anyone to build a clean room now and share pieces of the data to the application logic. Have the customer share pieces of their data to the application logic. Neither party has access to the data of the other party. And the application can now be the clean room itself. What's amazing here is the security of the system and the trust that the customer will have around this sandbox and how your application is installed directly into their account. You control what data and code is, is visible to the customer so your intellectual property is protected and both sides data is now protected. In this demo today, I'm showing what it looks like as a client of your native application. In this case, I've gone to the marketplace. I've found a interesting application that actually takes IP information and allows me to enrich it with information around their location. Often this is very useful for things like application logs and HTTP logs coming from customers. So you know where are they coming from? What time zones are they in? What countries are they in? But often this is a very large data set and difficult to incorporate. So wouldn't it be nice if I could just use the application natively? In this case, I've installed the application. I have a database that I didn't create that it just got installed as part of the application called IP to location. In this database, you can see there's no tables. There's really no views that I can see. No stages, no pipes, no streams, no tasks. The builder of the application has created two capabilities that I'm gonna leverage. The first is a function called IP to data that allows me to pass an IP address into the function and it returns the location information for that IP. The builder also created a store procedure for me, which allows me to enrich data in place and enrich an entire table. So I could pass in many IP addresses and it'll automatically add all location information for that. It's an enrichment use case. And I'll show you how that works. In this case, I'm going to use the database. So I'm gonna put that in the current state. It's going to probably start up a new warehouse for me. So this will take a second. 
And then I'm going to exercise the first command, which is passing an IP address to the application, and it will return the location to me. In this case, that IP address probably looks familiar to you. That's one of the Google DNS servers that they host for people to use all over the world. What's interesting here is it geolocated that to Milton View, California. You can see the approximate latitude and longitude of the IP address, the time zone, the zip code, a lot of very interesting information for where their DNS server is located. That was very useful to me. What happened here is the provider has automatically updated a database and is curating data for me that has information about the locations of all the IP addresses in the world. And I can leverage that and not worry about the complexity of keeping that data up to date or the logic needed to convert an IP address to a location. I could just leverage it directly inside of my pipelines and inside of my code. In this case, I'm gonna also create a table that has test data in it and show how the enrich feature works and how this could automatically allow you to enrich an entire table. We're gonna insert two IP addresses into this table. One is the one I showed earlier, which was one of Google's DNS IPs. And then also the other one is also another Google DNS IP. I'll show you what that data looks like. It should just have two IP addresses in it. There we go. And there's no IP data. So in this case, I've gotten IP addresses from customers, but I don't know where these came from. I don't know where the customer lives. As the client of the application, I need to grant the application access to this table because by default, the application can't just query any data in my database. So this block automatically grants the application access so it can now query this table that I've just created. This is needed so I can call the enrich data stored procedure. The enrich data stored procedure is code that's now deployed into this database that's now accessible to me because I installed the application. I pass in the database that I want it to enrich, the schema, the table, the field where the IP addresses are, and tell it to put the location inside of the IP data field. This is now enriching both of the records inside the table. This table could have billions of records also, and it would update all of those. In this case, it updated two records. Let me show you what the enrichment did. There we go. Both of these DNS servers appear to be in Mountain View, California. Very quickly, I was able to enrich data. I didn't have to worry about going to find a third party that would sell or give me IP address information and location information. I was able to just go to Marketplace, install an application, and enrich it in minutes. And that's the power of native applications. You as a builder can build applications and solve the needs of customers. They can then go to Marketplace and find these very quickly and easily and use them within minutes and trust that the security of Snowflake is such that these can be automatically installed into their account and leveraged immediately without going through large procurement cycles and worrying about the concern and security of data because you as a builder don't have access to my, in this case, IP addresses, but the code does. Hopefully you loved the, the demo that I provided there. I can't wait to see what you possibly build inside of native applications. I hope you loved checking out the two new features coming to Snowflake, native applications and Unistore. Please like and subscribe if you like the content today. If you'd like to find out more information, check out our two community sites, developers.snowflake.com and community.snowflake.com. If you'd like to test these features, reach out to your account team to gain access early. Thank you. Unistore with Snowflake, bringing together analytical data and transactional data, finally.